the 17th of November, 1932. Alberto commemorates his father, Giovanni Battista Pirelli, founder of the great tire manufacturer, before the company's board of directors. I saw him bravely and tenaciously competing in the industrial arena, and I can honestly say that all the credit for our company's definitive success in Italy and abroad goes to the skill and shrewdness of the unforgettable man we have lost. As for his father, Alberto's 50th birthday is the occasion for drawing comparisons between his life and that of the company, a story full of memories. You will welcome the opportunity for a daring and broad mission, worthy of a young man wanting to go places. Bon voyage. While in New York, about to embark on a training trip, Alberto holds the letter his father sent him in 1904. In these lines, he recognizes the path the company will take in the future. Many things have changed since that journey along the rubber road, heading up the Amazon, as far as Manaus. In Alberto's reports to his father, there is all his passion for the endeavor. The market is always incredibly strong. The arrivals are neither plentiful nor insufficient. Everything is purchased and dispatched. There is great demand from New York and Liverpool. The tyre soon becomes a strategic commodity. Pirelli is present in the leading European cities. It opens factories in Spain, England and Argentina. Its Italian soul is represented by the majestic structure of Bicocca. At the beginning of the 20th century, Pirelli faces the enormous challenge of producing pneumatica, as they were called then, that are reliable. The market associates the tyre industry exclusively with foreign brands, with names that seem to evoke the power of modernity. Now it's ready to welcome a new player, thanks to the decision to entrust its future to the power of imagination. So is born the myth of a brand, supported by artists who, through their work, offer an image which is not yet futurist, but projected into the future. But also by industrial research, with successful products such as the Cord and Superflex, capable of flanking international competition. Perhaps it's not by chance that during these first 30 years of the 20th century, New York is pivotal in the Pirelli story. It was from here that Alberti set out on his journey in 1904. From one of its offices came the elongated P trademark that still accompanies the company today. Here again in 1929, unaware of the impending economic crisis, Pirelli is listed on the Wall Street Stock Exchange. From this panorama, it's impossible to imagine that Europe is heading towards its darkest hour.